see that. What's that one about his seven tickets? What's that all about? 17 tickets, fucking Brendan. Let's see this. Big up Unix. Big up my guy Unix. What's Unix saying? Let's see what he's saying about 17 tickets, Brendan. I don't know how this is. Po how do they find this information out? How do they find out he only sold 17 tickets? I love it, man. This is fucking incredible. <laughs> Oh, let's see what happened here. A guy went to see Brendan Shaw perform stand-up comedy. May God have mercy on his soul. And uh, he went to the Fighter and the Kids subreddit to explain what happened. So let's oh, really? check it out. Legit. Bapa destroyed the little career he had as a stand-up comedian. Okay, maybe I might read this myself then so I can see what he said. Let's see what he says here. Or maybe I just read it from his screen. What do I do? Let me just read it from his screen. I don't know why I'm doing this. I'll read it from his screen. So, um, okay, big up Unique for the video. I'm just going to read it from your screen. Sorry, my friend. Let's see what he said here. Uh, he says, Legit Baba destroyed the, the little career that he had as a stand-up comedian. We heard about the show on TFAK and thought, why not? Let's give him a chance and not listen to the homeless cats. It was a serious embarrassment. For a room that was capacity of over 100 people, there were 17 of us which also included the bartenders and the servers. Yo, big up case of Moses. Well, one. Youch. Including the bartenders and the servers. 17. Yikes. Papa didn't even headline for a show that was built around him. He went second to last and opened with a joke about dick pics and OnlyFans. Real quality material from a quality guy. As usual, Mexican and family, a staple of his stand-up set, received the other majority of the bashing. It didn't come off as well as 15 of the 17 of us were Latino. And this gringo papi is telling us how much he hates Mexico. Mexican and his Mexican in-laws. Exactly. It's so strange, that whole grift, that whole line of comedy he does anyway. Um, additionally, let's just say the overly done Botech rumors are 100% legit along with the lip fillers sitting along a couple feet away not only did he look greasy as fuck he's just for men mustache and the uh, in back seat hairline i agree he definitely does look deformed the set dragged on for another time for an entire 10 minutes i was just hoping that he'd walk me to my truck and put me out of my misery alas he did before we could slow clap his exit 17 people god damn that might explain why he's doing the toontown thing to be fair um I have always said, like, whenever I, I was doing my DJ gigs and I was playing in bars, I'll be in pubs where people didn't want me to be there. And I'll be literally playing there and performing. I was like, I was at the Berghain. I'll be performing. Like I was at the biggest nightclub in the world, the biggest festival. I didn't care. I was going for it super hard, right? But that's part of the grind. You kind of start, you know, with one person watching you or coming to buy your tickets, and then you kind of grow. The thing with Brendan and why this is funny is because from the moment he started, he kind of used numbers as a way to justify his career or because you guys don't think I'm funny, but I sell out, I sell out, I sell out, I sell out. He justified his existence with the numbers and the, in the sellout. And obviously he tried to like stunt on, you know, other comedians too with that, because I think, you know, some of them just didn't think it was funny. It's like, Oh, you don't think I'm funny, but funny is funny. And I sell tickets. Now that he's in a position where he's not getting those early, he's not getting those ticket sales he used to get when he started his career, when everyone didn't really know who he was. And now it's kind of like, you know, he's getting the ticket sales that are more representative of his level of fame and maybe his level of like, you know, his unlikability. He's now, it's becoming more embarrassing now because that thing you were resting your hat on is now becoming something that people are dunking on you for. So I find that to be really interesting to see this happening in real time, to be fair. But I still find it odd he keeps getting booked places. That's something that's very different from, I would say, the dance music techno world or the DJ world that I'm in. In the DJ world that I'm in, if you don't sell tickets or you don't, you're not a draw, right? You don't get booked again. And sometimes the bookers or the agents or the whatever will say, lose my number. If they book you and they think you can sell a certain amount of tickets and you don't sell them, it's legitimately a career ender. So I don't understand why in comedy, you cannot contribute. Like, let's say they had like three comedians on that bill. Brendan's the number one, probably, probably the most popular on there. It's not without reason to assume if you're a promoter, you book Brendan for a bill on a comedy club because you think he's going to at least contribute to half of the sales. If you can't even sell more than five, you have to question everything. 
and why you're even booking him. But for some reason, in the comedy world, you get more chances than you ever get in the DJ world. DJ world, you have a couple of dud gigs. Even if you did nothing wrong, like in terms of your playing was good, just like people didn't come out for it or whatever, you don't sell tickets, whatever the reason is. If you don't sell the tickets, you are out of here. It's done for you. But in the comedy scene, it seems to be odd. You can kind of get away with it in a way. It's really strange. Not sure why, but hey, that's what happened. He sold only those amount of tickets. 